I'm in the process of doing some maintenance on my virtualization stack. I am running Proxmox 5.4. And I figured it would be awesome, and maybe you guys might like this, if I just show some video footage of any maintenance that I do in my home lab, because I know that home lab is actually something that a lot of Linux users find interesting. I'm running Linux on everything, but I actually have a server rack. I have two virtualization servers running Proxmox on there. And yesterday I got a notification that there was a new version of Proxmox available, version 6.0. I looked at the feature list and you know what? I'm really excited to check this out. So in a previous video, I showed you guys rolling upgrades. So I just went ahead and showed you the process of basically upgrading a cluster of two servers. And, you know, I didn't want any downtime or any of the VMs to be unavailable. So I actually showed you guys how to do a rolling upgrade. Now, in this video, what I'm going to show you guys is the process of me upgrading my virtualization stack to Proxmox 6 from Proxmox 5.4. And the first thing you're going to want to do is install all of your upgrades on the current version of Proxmox that you're on. So do that first. And again, I covered that in a previous video. And once you are completely up to date on the version you currently have installed, then you follow the documentation on the Proxmox wiki to go through that process. And what you're going to see in this video is me going through that process myself. This is completely unscripted. And unlike a lot of videos I used to do, I mean, this is my actual virtualization stack. Just like in the last video, you saw my actual virtualization stack. I'm not working on a test machine. This is production. And I have no idea what to expect because I haven't gone through this process yet to upgrade from a 5.4 installation to 6. So what you're going to see is me going through the actual process. Hopefully this is successful, but let's go ahead and get started. All right. So here on my laptop, I have a console open to my Proxmox stack. You can see that I have two servers, vhost1 and vhost2. In case you haven't seen the previous video, just really quickly, you can kind of see some of my um, specs here. I have both of these servers have two six core processors with hyper threading, which gives it about 24 virtual cores. The RAM is a bit different. I, I didn't actually make that the same yet. I intend to. And, you know, we have 64 gigs of RAM on vhost1 and then vhost2 actually has a little bit less, has uh, 48. And my virtual machines aren't extremely big. Basically, any one of these servers can handle all of these virtual machines. So what we're going to do is migrate all the VMs from vhost1 to vhost2. Then I'm going to upgrade vhost1 to Proxmox 6, migrate the VMs back, and then I'm going to do the same thing to vhost2. So let's go ahead and see if this is going to be a successful process. Now again, I went ahead and did all of my updates. So if I go here to my first server, I go to updates, no updates available, just to make sure you click on refresh. Task OK. There are no updates. So you want to be up to date. And the second thing you want to do, and this is going along with the documentation, but this is the best practice anyway, make sure your backups are current. You have a backup of all of your virtual machines. So I could lose all of these virtual machines here and it would not be a problem. I mean, yeah, I'd have to rebuild them, but I wouldn't lose any data. I would just have to restore them from backups. So you want to make sure that you do have backups. So for example, if I randomly click on the server right here, I go to the backup tab, you can see that I have these backups. I have FreeNAS Central Storage. So right here you can see FreeNAS, excuse me, FreeNAS Storage. And that's where the backups are on. So they are not on the actual servers themselves. So these servers can be completely wiped and it wouldn't matter because the disk files, backups are all in central storage. So that's fine. I am all backed up. And even if my backups fail, I have all my data um, basically backed up to external hard drives and also the cloud as well. So I'm pretty much covered. You, basically, you just want to make sure that you have all of your updates installed and you are uh, completely backed up in case something goes wrong. So let's go ahead and migrate all these VMs. I'm going to, so I right clicked here. I'm going to do a bulk migrate, migrate everything from vhost1 to vhost2. And I'm going to let that finish. It's going to take several minutes for this to get through because it's got to migrate quite a few here. So we'll just let this get going and I'll be back when it's done. All right. So that task is done. So I'll go ahead and close this right here. And just so you know, I am basically following this guide right here. So I know this URL, the text here might be a little small in the video, but I'll have a link in the show notes in the description below this video. But basically, I'm just going through the process right here. So what does it ask us to actually do? So going along with this, 
It's asking us to use this script right here, PVE 5 to 6. It's basically a checklist program, and it's included in the latest Proxmox 5.4, which it says right here, and it basically is gonna give you tips, warnings, and things like that about your potential upgrade. So what we need to do is run this first before we actually go through with the process. So I'm gonna open up a terminal. See, I'll, I'll just make this full screen and increase the font size here. And then what I'm gonna do is SSH into that machine, the one we just migrated the VMs from. All right, clear the screen and we need to run PVE526. Let's see what happens. It says we have a failure and a warning. Let's scroll up and see what it's exactly talking about. It's warning me that the cluster consists of less than three nodes. And that's okay because I don't have like high availability set up or anything like that. So I don't have to worry about server fencing in my case. I have to basically manually fail things over. But if you wanted to do a cluster, it is a good idea to have three nodes. I just don't really um, have a need for that personally. But we do have a failure right here. It's warning me that CoralSync 2.x is installed, but we actually need to upgrade to 3.x instead. So back here, I did actually see that on the list. It tells me to upgrade to CoralSync 3 first. So let's go ahead and see what's required to do that. So basically what it's telling me to do is to ensure that the only warning that I have or error that I have is about CoralSync and to basically fix any other problems first before we attack this problem, unless any other problems are benign. In this case, I don't care about this so we are free to go ahead and tackle this problem right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Back here, the documentation, it is telling me to basically run this command on both machines. So that's important, both machines. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a new tab here. And I'll also increase the font size a bit and we'll go into vhost2. And what we want to do is run that command on both. So I will paste it in right here. And then I'll go over here to vhost2 and I will do the same thing here. We can see that the stop command worked or did it. Let's just double check that, make sure we're going to do a status. And it's not running on this server. Nor is it running on this one. So we should be good to go on that. Next, we want to run this command here on each node. So I'll paste it in here, run that, and then go to vhost2, do the same thing. And we'll double check. And let's see. All right, so it's stopped on both. We should be good to go. Now let's see what it says to do now. So here's the command that we go ahead and run. This is basically just creating a new repository. So we're gonna go ahead and paste that in here. And also on my second server as well. And then what we do is we run apt update. apt update so next we're going to check that we're going to do apt list dash dash upgradable so basically just make sure that coral sync and its uh, various libraries here are the only ones that are there and we're just going to go ahead and check this one as well we get the same output so with that out of the way on both servers we're going to run apt dist upgrade and you know make sure you pay attention to the documentation because they have some very specific notes on this so i don't have three nodes or high availability or anything like that i'm just going to go ahead and do it and then i'm going to do it over here too and let those update okay vhost2 is done 
and vhost1 is done. We will run pvecm status, and we can run this anytime during the process to see what the status is. We have quorum of two, that's what's expected, and we could do the same thing here. We have expected two, and we actually have two, just the same thing here, so that's good. Go ahead and minimize or clear the screen there and here. So next what we're going to do is start the services in this order. Here's the HA service right here. We're going to start that. We're going to also start that over here on server two. We're going to wait for those to come up. Check the status. Make sure it didn't fail. Good so far. And we'll do the same thing here. And we're good. Next, we're going to start this service on both PVEHA CRM. And again, check the status, make sure it came up cleanly. So that's good, that one worked. We're going to check the status. And that one's good as well. So, so far everything is going according to what the documentation is telling us to do. So, uh, so far so good. So next what we're going to do is work on vhost1. There's a repository we need to add. So this echo command is basically doing that. And I'm going to basically press enter here, and then we're going to run apt update. All right, it says 59 packages can be upgraded. We can see the list by running apt list upgradable. I have quite a few here. So let's go ahead and update. So what we're going to run is apt dist upgrade, and this should upgrade us to the latest version. And also make sure that you are looking at the documentation because there's another repository that you might need. I'm not using Ceph, so I don't need that in my case, but you might want to take a look at that just in case. Anyway, let's go ahead and run the upgrade and just make sure that everything looks fine here. I don't have anything that needs to be removed, so we should be in good shape. All right, so that part's done. Go ahead and clear the screen. And then now what we need to do is remove that extra repository that we added here. So that's Etsy apt sources.list.d corosync3.list. Just to make sure it's actually gone, we'll do apt update. Okay, good to go. Now what we also need to do is replace everything from stretch to buster in the Etsy apt sources.list file. So now let's run apt update. All right, so we have quite a few more packages to upgrade here. apt dist upgrade, let's go ahead and run that. And press enter. All right, so the package update was complete. I actually lost my terminal after that, so I won't be able to show you that part, but I, but I promise it did go through successfully. So let's go ahead and get right back into the upgrade. So now if I do apt list dash dash upgradable, we see that there's nothing upgradable on my system, so that's awesome. That means we are completely up to date. So let's go ahead and reboot this server. That should disconnect me. And here in my browser, what I'm going to do is connect to the other server because the first one is going down and I do want a interface here. So now I'm here at the second server. And since I rebooted the first host, I'm basically just waiting for it to come back online. As you see, I do have all my VMs running here on server number two, so we're just waiting for server number one to come back. So here in server number two, I could just try to ping server number one, which obviously isn't going to work because it's rebooting right now. But, but as soon as it starts pinging, then I know that the server is back online. So we're just going to wait for that, and uh, I'll be back when that's actually responding. All right, so the server is now pinging. Go ahead and stop the ping here. Should be able to get back into the server here by using SSH. And I'm there, uptime is about a minute. And we can see that vhost1 is online. So I'm gonna go here to my very first tab because now we need to work with server number two. So I'm gonna refresh this just to make sure it's currently up to date. 
and all the VMs are here. We're on Proxmox 6, so the upgrade was successful. So now what I'm going to do is just expand this and migrate all the VMs from server number two to server number one. All right, so I'm going to work on the second server now, just basically doing the same thing that I did on the first. I'm going to change all occurrences of stretch to buster in this file right here. Then I need to run this command right here to adjust the Proxmox enterprise list. So I'll press enter and now we'll do apt update. And then apt dist upgrade. And let's go ahead and run it. All right, so those package upgrades were complete. So next I'm going to remove the repository file since we don't need that anymore. And then just to make sure it's purged, I'll just do apt update again. All right, good to go. So back here to the console, I'm on vhost1. We can see that all the VMs that were on vhost2 have migrated to vhost1. So now I am free to just go ahead and reboot it. So now I'm going to ping vhost2 so I can see when it comes back online. Now when you do this, it is possible for it to respond until it finishes rebooting. I've actually seen it take a minute in my case to reboot, but right now we can see that it is unreachable because it's rebooting. So we're basically just waiting for it to come back online. And now we can see that the server is pinging. So that's awesome. It should be back online now. So we'll just go ahead and connect to it. And we can see that it hasn't even been up a minute yet, but it is available. Back here on the Proxmox console, we see vhost2 is now responding. So just to make sure that it's working properly, I'm just gonna migrate one of my VMs over to it. You can see that one was successful. And just to be sure, I'm going to go ahead and just migrate one more. Do an online migration to vhost2. All right, and that is complete. And we can see that we have a console window here, so we should be good to go. So there you go, guys. I was able to upgrade from Proxmox 5 to Proxmox 6 on both servers. And I was able to do that without any of my VMs being down. I moved all the VMs from the first server to the second, upgraded the first, rebooted it, and then I repeated the process on the second server. And I was able to get them both upgraded with no issue whatsoever. So now that I am finally on Proxmox 6, I'm looking forward to checking out all the new features. So that's gonna be awesome. And if any of the new features are noteworthy, maybe I might even make a video about it if you guys wanna see it. But in the meantime, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you wanna help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video, where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.